here we are in Kangik Sujuak. I'm Jim Baird, and right now is the beginning of my month-long 370-kilometer expedition to cross Nunavik on foot. Who knows what I could run into? I mean, a lot of dangers out there. There's a chance I can see polar bears, but the weather is gonna be my biggest concern. Of course, I got my dog, Buck, who's gonna be helping me out along the way, and he's gonna be my only companion because this is a solo trip. I'm gonna walk right over the Ungava Peninsula from Kangik Suyuak to Ukuluvik, and I'm gonna pass Pingwalawik Crater on the way. It was uh, minus 37 there without the wind chill today. Uh, it's about 2,000 feet elevation, so it's gonna be pretty chilly. I got an iceberg behind me. Beautiful mountains everywhere. This has gotta be the most gorgeous northern community I've ever been to. Spend a couple more days in town, and I'm gonna to head out. Okay, well, I'm in my room at the co-op in Kangik Sujuak. Yesterday, the visibility was much better. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to go out and check out that iceberg. Yeah. So if you're traveling on the sea ice and you don't wanna melt snow, if you see an iceberg, you know you got some fresh water. So then it could just go like that. Like. Okay, well, I was checking out the iceberg here and uh, Jamie from town came out and basically warned me in a nice way to get away from it because big chunks can break off and squish me, which I'm really thankful for because I don't want to die. We're on Hudson Strait here and here in Ungava Bay have some of the highest tides in the world. And uh, at low tide, the people of the community chip a hole through the ice and they walk under the sea ice and they find mussels on the sea floor. And uh, it's the only region in the world where people do that. So I'm just here with some students and uh, Lukasi. Lukasi is the, uh, the expert in this area, so I think we're in good hands because I hear, you know, it can be dangerous. When the tide goes out, there's a dry space, and we know that the water's coming in, so we have to get out right away. Very beautiful under the ice, the way that the blue kind of shimmers on the water, uh, the way that the ice sparkles with the lights, and all the mussels. I mean, there's just as many as you could ever hope for there. Uh, everybody filled up a full bucket, and we only covered a very small area of this massive coast, so it's just an unbelievable resource, these mussels, and uh, just amazing. And this is only the beginning of my trip. Now I gotta walk back to town. I got all my mussels, I had a couple things to do, but now I'm cooking them up for dinner and just steaming them with a little tomato sauce and they're starting to smell really good. I've been here for two nights now and I'm just about ready to head out. Beautiful day. I just wanna show you all the gear I have here. These pulks are basically just a big hockey bag but the bottom is a sled. Uh, so I can pack all my stuff in there, zip it up, strap it down. It's really important to try to remember where all your stuff is because if the wind picks up and you need to pull out some warmer gloves or some warmer clothing, you don't have to root through all your stuff because you get frostbite by the time you find anything. So I'm trying to remember where I'm putting my clothes, uh, where I'm putting my survival gear and everything like that so I can get it, access it instantly when I need to. Come here, bud. I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm looking to do about 15 kilometers a day. Uh, as my load lightens, I'll probably be able to do a little bit more, but it's going to be pretty tough slog at the beginning because, you know, I have over 300 pounds of stuff to haul. So let's get this trip started. 